Wright and uh, Jacob Malkoon all fighting this weekend, uh, UFC. Mike Richmond going after a title this weekend, BKFC out in Denver. He's coming up. But let's get right to it. It's been a long time since he's been on the air with, uh, with me. Uh, he was heavily involved in the show back in the day, back in his playing days. He's been busy, but we've got Tony Saunders on to talk about something that is just driving me crazy. T.S., Tony Saunders, how are you? I'm good, sir. How are you doing? Not too bad. We appreciate your time. I know we've reconnected over the past uh, couple months, year or so, uh, with both of our uh, love for the sport of MMA and the UFC, and we're going to see each other here in a couple weeks. But I reached out to you. 100%. It's driving me crazy, and I don't watch much baseball anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, it's driven me away. A lot of things have driven me away. Now the And we can talk about the shift and all that stuff that's being banned. <laughs> but the other day, I'm sitting at home with my wife. The playoffs are on. I'm like, all right, let's give it a shot. Let's watch it a little bit. And then I see something that I cannot believe happened. Seattle playing the Toronto Blue Jays. I believe the score was 8-1 to one at the time. Mm -hmm. Seattle, whether it was done on purpose or not, and we both can discuss whether it was, the Seattle pitcher beamed, and I just found out it's only called being beamed if you get hit in the head, correct? So beamed or drilled, yeah, right. either one. Right, well, drilled, you know, if you get hit in, on the on the left side, if you get hit in the arm, you get drilled. I never knew mm -hmm. that beamed means you get hit in the head. You get hit in the okay. in the coconut. I didn't That's know new that. to me, but okay. Yeah, yeah me either, but go ahead. I didn't Let's know elaborate. <laughs> so I'm watching this. I see what happens. Uh, you know, the Blue Jay guy, you know, handled it very well, whatever, whatever, whatever. And I'm thinking back to discussions I've had with pitchers, one being my younger brother who pitched at Alabama, you being a former pitcher right here in Tampa Bay. Tell me that I'm not crazy that there should have been some retaliation instantly. Oh, no, 100%. Yeah, I mean... There's a difference between, you know, at that time, the Toronto hitters were very comfortable in the box. Uh, they were taking some very large swings. And, you know, occasionally you do have to send a message like, hey, this is my plate, you know. But when you hit someone in the head, that's different. That's You, you could alter someone's ability to be able to play the game. I mean, this is how we all, I did, guys, folks now playing, they, they feed their families by playing this sport. And you with one pitch, you can take that away. Um, you never hit anybody in the head. And, uh, you know, pitches get away from time to time, yes. But if you're intent somebody and you head, yeah, that's that's a little extreme. If I was pitching, no, nah, it would have been the first hitter to next. thinking and, and real quickly kind of the comment you just said i remember uh, shane victorino a very good friend of mine also a lover of the sport of mixed martial arts a ball get got close to his head i don't think it hit him and i remember him screaming at the pitcher and pointing you know to his stomach area like this is where you hit me a hundred percent yep yep a hundred percent there's ways to do it and and believe me i remember i was pitching in a game in texas and um pitch got away and then another pitch got away and I said, okay, I'll take care of this. And when Pudge came up, I hit him right in his hip. Like, hey, guys, enough of this. Don't let any more pitches get away, but I'm going to do it the right way. I hit him right in the hip, sent a message. Nobody else got hit for the rest of the game. So, you know, there, there's a way to do it professionally. Uh, that, yeah, that's scary when you start getting up into someone's head and face. Do you believe scores 8-1, to one you know, I don't know about the, you know the bullpen. I don't know about their pitching. I don't know about any of that stuff. But do you believe that by not retaliating, that it changed the whole demeanor of the game and ultimately could have, as it did, cost the Blue Jays the game? A hundred percent. You know, because I, I can tell you a story from fact. We were playing a game uh, against Colorado when I was with the Marlins at the time, and one of the pitchers—I don't want to say his name—he was on the mound. And uh, they hit a couple of our players where there was no retaliation done. And, uh, you know, kind of the players were like, what's this all? You know, really? We're going to get hit on purpose. You have the ability to take care of us and you don't. It, it, it kind of takes the temperature out of the room completely. And, you know, we end up losing that game. And it, it, it's a very similar situation there to where their teammate just got hit in the head, potentially could have ended his evening or the season for him. 
and nothing, not even not even a scare pitch behind someone, not even a Randy Johnson to the screen type thing messing around with John Crook that year. Nothing was done. It kind of, you, you, A, you lose respect for that guy on the mound at the time, and and then you start questioning. I mean, yeah, it just it it changes the whole momentum because that look it literally looked like it took the air completely out of everybody. And, and that's, and that's how I, they played the rest of the game. And, and that's what I thought as well. Now, uh, with, you know, if you can talk about it, you've been out of the league for a couple of years now, so hopefully you can. Um, <laughs> is it something that has to come from from the manager or? Can a pitcher but take very, a No, teams? no, no, no. Very, 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 very rarely at that level does it ever come from a manager. It's self-policing amongst ourselves. I mean, I'll tell you another example. We're pitching against Atlanta, and Tom Glavin was pitching. He hit Gary Sheffield twice. Now, everybody knows Glavin's got phenomenal control. Right. So... In my mind, back then, National League batters hit. If you're going to be man enough to hit one of my players, you better be ready. So I drilled Glavin and broke his hand. Not my problem. You shouldn't have hit Gary twice. You know, and I even called over after the game. I said, look, I didn't mean for you to break any bones. I said, but I had to do what I had to do. And he understood. But, you know, you as a pitcher, you have to stand up for your teammates. I mean, you have to. You can't. You can't allow a situation to go by when it when it was that intentional. Because look, yes, the score was what it was. That was definitely trying to send a message that you need to start feeling a little uncomfortable in the box. But there's ways to do it. You don't hit somebody in the head to prove that message. You know, and, so, and, take, and I know we only have another couple minutes before the break. But taking it one step further, by not you know retaliating, by not you know responding to what was done. Let's say the Blue Jays would have won that second game. Now, game three, you still haven't retaliated, and I think whatever happened in game two would have continued into game three. And, and let's, not, let's not forget the whole thing here. We're not talking the game was three to two, and you got to worry about losing the game. Right. You know, the score was what it was, so the, the fear of putting one person on base is not going to cost you the game. Now, baseball players do have very long memories, so, you know, if it's the eighth inning and you're up three to two, want to put a guy on base to potentially tie that game, don't deal with that at a later time. But if you're saying game three or whatever, you can deal with it then. But that wasn't the situation here. So I think that's, that's why it was so polarizing to me is, hold on, the game's out of control. Your guy just got hit and you did nothing about it. Yeah, yeah, that says a lot. Okay, well, cool. I just wanted to make sure that I knew a little bit. <laughs> Real quick, uh, I, and, and again, we're we're going to talk again uh, very very soon. Give me your yes. thoughts on, on the, the banning of uh, the shift. I love. I hate the shift. I hate the big bags. I hate all this stuff that they're doing. You know, just baseball is baseball. Line up where you're supposed to line up. Play like you're supposed to play, and let's go. I I was never a fan of the shift. And it's funny, I don't watch too much baseball anymore either because of all the the rule changes and everything. It's taken the history away of the game for me. I'm not, you know, everyone's like, good, let's move in a different direction. No, I like history. I I like baseball the way it is. You know, move a guy over, small ball. You know, that that to me is baseball. Not waiting around for someone to hit a ball 800 feet to win a game. So, so Tony. So, speaking of history, like, what what do you recognize as the official single record? Is it Aaron Judge's sixty? Oh no, no, no. Barry Bonds. End of story. No questions asked. And there's no asterisks. It doesn't no matter. Asterisk. None. No. 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 Shouldn't be any. So here's here's my take on that whole thing. So yes, did players get caught? Yes. Hey, did David Ortiz get caught? Yes. Is he in the Hall of Fame first ballot? Yes. So okay. why is it good for some and not for others? You know, if it was illegal during that time within Major League Baseball and you got caught, then yes, there should have been an asterisk. But it was not illegal at the time within Major League Baseball. Hell, the owners wanted it because it's what brought fans back. I mean, every commercial is about Bash Brothers and hitting home runs and everything else. Nobody nobody threw a red flag up in the air. I mean, everybody saw the size of these guys. It was no secret. You're 
What's that? Tony all riled up now. <laughs> he's going to pluck me at the plate next time. <laughs> <He's definitely, laughs> hey, Tony, we're, we're, we're out of time, but i got to get you back on. Awesome. There's a lot of stuff we need to talk about.